clean up the minions real quick. Persephone ultimate, we're gonna basic back that down, bringing our teammate. Throw off our two. That's a Vulcan ultimate. It's able to connect on a few. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. Guan uses his ultimate, the double horse charge. We're able to get the pick onto one. We're gonna dash up. Land some basics. We're able to get a pick on another. We're gonna try to get some damage onto this Baron. And we're able to secure a triple kill. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shining Bee Gaming, and today we have a viewer request and a skin showcase for the Tombstone Rider Hachiman and Kerry. If you are new to the channel, I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intentions of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. As always, the full build is in the description down below. If you are a returning viewer, this game is the first Hunter game I played after about a two week break. So I am going to be a little rusty on those basic attacks and I'm going to miss quite a few. But bear with me, we have a pretty good game. It starts off slow, but once we get to the late game, we make a pretty big difference in team fights. So let's go ahead and jump into Hachiman's kit. Hachiman's 1, Eagle Eye. When Hachiman toggles his ability, instead of basic attacks, he fires a series of arrows that travel further and deal additional damage. Each hit may trigger item effects for basic attacks and can critically hit. The bonus damage is going to be 10 at level 1, 30 at level 5. The ammo count is going to be 3 for levels 1 and 2, 4 for 3 through 5. Hachiman's 2, Heavenly Banner. Hachiman calls down a sacred banner from the heavens, damaging all enemies in range, granting himself an attack speed buff, and leaving a banner which buffs his allies' attack speed while they are within range. The attack speed is going to be 5% at level 1, 15% at level 5, the duration is 4 seconds at level 1, 6 seconds at level 5. Hachiman's 3. Hachiman dashes forward, damaging and passing through enemies. Upon reaching his destination, Hachiman swings his blade in a full circle, hitting all enemies within range. If hit by both attacks, enemy gods are going to be stunned. They're going to be stunned for 1 second. Hachiman's ultimate, mounted archery. Hachiman leaps on his horse and charges forward. While mounted, he is immune to crowd control and can aim separately from the direction of his horse. He may fire to launch an arrow at every enemy god within a cone. If he hits an enemy god, they're going to be slowed. The slow duration is 20% at level 1, 40% at level 5, and the slow duration is 1.5 seconds. And finally, Hachiman's passive, Master of Arms. Hachiman grows stronger as he lands blows, hitting enemies with basic attacks, energizes Hachiman, granting him a stack of MP5. This stacks up to 5 times and lasts 8 seconds. The MP5 is going to be 2 plus 0.3 per level, and it's going to last for 8 seconds. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1, we want to put a point to Hachiman's 2. Level 2, put a point to his 3. Level 3, put a point to his 1. Level 4, another point to his 2. We want to max out his ultimate whenever we can. Max out his 2, max out his 1, max out his 3. In terms of the start, we started with Leather Cow and Tier 1 of Devourer's Gauntlets. Leather Cow is going to provide us 15 physical power, 10% physical lifesteal, and 5% attack speed. It has a passive that while you're within 66 units of an allied god, you're going to gain 10% attack speed. If you are alone instead, you're going to gain 5% movement speed. Then we also picked up 3 health potions and a multi potion. Since Hachiman can recover MP5 through his passive, we don't really need to pick up a mana potion. Sobek's able to get the first blood. For our relic, we went with Aegis. We're going against an Honor whose ultimate can be very troublesome. And then they have a Gilgamesh jungle. We're going to go ahead and hit this Harpy, get some additional XP. It's a 2v1 now, so we should be able to get a level lead. Should be able to clear wave with ease and then just keep hitting camps. They have a full wave to get through, so we should be able to get this lesser scorpion. In the early game, we want to try to hit the wave as much as possible with our two. However, once we get to that mid and late game, we want to try to hit enemy gods. And if we can hit the enemy minion wave with the enemy god, that's just a bonus. That's a good pluck. We throw off our two, we're able to get some damage onto that on her. Be right back. No on my way. We're gonna rotate to our purple buff. 
The purple buff is going to increase our attack speed by 10%. If we take a look at our passive, our passive icon has three arrows and a number in it. The number is the amount of MP5 that we have, and then the arrows represent our one. So if we can steadily maintain 16 MP5, that's actually really good. R2 will also speed up the attack speed of minions along with our allied gods. The magic number we're looking for is 1700 gold. That will allow us to get the tier 3 of Devourer's Gauntlets. Anything extra can go towards potions. So we're probably going to be backing after this wave. We get stunned. We don't really want to take a 2v1, so we're going to start falling back. We do have our ultimate if we need it. Our ultimate is a really strong ability. It provides us CC immunity and allows us to get away if we really need to. It also allows us to be super aggressive and dash up towards the enemy, get close, hit them with a slow, and if they jump away, we can use our jump to catch up to them. And they should still be within range of us if we use our ultimate correctly. So Beck is rotating back over. We haven't really found a window to back yet, so we're just going to clear this wave and then back. We're going to go ahead and pick up Devourer's Gauntlets. Devourer's Gauntlets is going to provide us a 30 physical power, 15% lifesteal. It has a passive that killing an enemy god or minion gives you a stack of plus 0.5 physical power and plus 2% physical lifesteal. You receive 5 stacks for a kill on an enemy god and 1 stack for a minion kill. This can stack up to 70 times. The evolved version of this item is going to provide us 65 physical power and 29% physical lifesteal. So that 29% physical lifesteal is a very large amount. We're going to land some damage onto this Fafnir. He's being super aggressive. This might be a free pick. Nope. Free pick for our jungler, not a free pick for us. On her jumps away, we're gonna go to use our ultimate. Fire our two, that gets a slow, he uses his beads. We're gonna hit him with our two, and we're able to get the pick onto the on her. So right now we have a level on their carry and two levels on the enemy support. Gotta head off any ambushes. Your middle tower is under attack. The new magic number is 1550. That's gonna allow us to get the attack speed boots. The side harpy comes up, so we're going to go ahead and rotate to that. This early game is not too exciting. We're really just farming up, getting ready for that mid and late game. Our one level lead has gone to a three level lead. We're going to get our wards set up and just make sure that if anybody's coming over, we're going to have a heads up before they get here. So now we're getting 23 MP5 whenever our passive is fully stacked.
This Zonher is playing pretty smart. He's down in level, so he's just playing it super safe. He hasn't really given us a window to be able to attack him and get the pick onto him. So right here, we're gonna try to hit on her with our two, along with the minions, and we are able to do that. Fafnir is close by, but we're just gonna go ahead and back it up. We're gonna go ahead back and pick up the attack speed boots. Attack speed boots are just gonna give us 25% increased attack speed. Been very helpful as a hunter. We look at the minimap and we see our team closing in on this on her. He jumps away. He's really far away from us now, so we're just gonna go ahead and clean up these minions under tower. They ain't stealing any bases today. Nice job. Enemy missing middle. This is our purple's up. That is our next objective. We could probably start looking at the Great Scorpion and Gold Fury. We are level 11, tied with Baron Somdi, who is their solo laner. Vulcan's going for the Greatest Scorpion. We're going to help him out. We have yet to see the enemy jungler of this game. So I feel like we're kind of lucky that he hasn't come over and tried to gank us. So our one now has four shots. Honor has a full wave to deal with, so we should be able to get this lesser scorpion for free. Interesting on her ultimate. I think he did it just to clear wave. An ally has been slain. An enemy has been slain. Your middle tower is under attack. Right now, we're kind of lacking in power, but I think as soon as we get our next item online, we'll be okay on that front. At least, it simulates like we have power. It actually doesn't provide us any, but it just allows us to deal additional damage. We tried rotating mid, but we saw that we really weren't going to be able to do anything because they were sitting under tower. So we're just going to go ahead and invade the enemy red buff. That is going to cost us a little bit of XP because the minions are fighting in mid. Now that this purple is enhanced from the Greatest Scorpion, we're going to go ahead and be getting 25% increased attack speed, but we're wearing red and we can't pick it up. So never mind that train of thought. So we're definitely dominating our lane. It looks like solo lane is kind of struggling a little bit. So there we just throw our two straight up on on her, trying to get his health to go down a little bit. He jumps away. Yeah, he's just not giving us any kind of window to attack him. So there's really not too much we're able to do right now, other than just farm up, get camps. 
We're going to go ahead back and pick up Odysseus's bow or Oboe. Oboe is going to provide us with 40% increased attack speed and it has a passive that every fourth basic attack is going to trigger a chain lightning that damages targets and up to four nearby enemies for 15 plus 60% of your basic attack power. So if you feel like you're missing your basic attacks, this item is the item for you. You're going to deal damage to enemies even if you don't hit them with basic attacks. If you hit minions, it'll bounce around. If you hit one enemy god, it can bounce to another. I'm going to try to rotate around him. He jumps away. Whenever an enemy is sitting back as far as this guy is, I feel like this is somebody that we need to get their tower down for. Normally I kind of just let the minions get the towers for me, however, he's using it. He's using and abusing that tower to protect them. So we're going to try to get that down here in just a little bit. So right now our attack speed is 1.95, the cap for the attack speed is 2.5. So right now, as we are, if we have our 2 active and we have the enhanced purple buff, we're going to be sitting at 2.49 attack speed, which is just 0.04 under the cap. So we've almost hit the cap. Gonna get some free damage onto that Fafnir. He's gonna back it up. We are level 16 at 15 minutes, so we are kind of on track to hit level 20 by 20 minutes. We don't see on her, we're gonna get his tower. This should open things up for us a little bit. If he challenges minions in the middle of our lane, he's not gonna have anywhere to run back to. We can use our ultimate to catch up to him. Bit of a team fight going on mid. We're gonna go ahead and rotate over there. We see Persephone. She's not really our target. And because we didn't go for her, she's going to get some free damage on us. A little bit of a misplay right there. We get hit by a lot of damage, so we're going to go ahead and back it up. And we're going to go ahead and pick up Wind Demon. Wind Demon is going to provide us with 25 physical power, 20% attack speed, and 20% critical strike chance. It has a passive that your critical hits provide you with a 10% physical penetration buff and increase your attack speed by 15% and movement speed by 10% for 5 seconds. We're going to try to get some damage off right here. Damn team's able to secure the Pyromancer. That's not that big of a deal. We know that they're coming from Fire Giant, so we're gonna go ahead and not push too hard. And I think this is the most embarrassing play of the game. We use our ultimate to try to flank them, but our ultimate expires before we can even get a shot off. We're gonna fire our two, we're able to get to pick onto one, we're gonna land some basic attacks, we're able to get to pick on another, and Guan Yu is able to clean up the Fafnir. That's three down. Our Vulcan's making a call for Fire Giant, and I think that is the right call. Any ally that stands within our flag area is going to gain increased attack speed. Our team is able to secure the fire giant. We're going to go ahead back, start working on Deathbringer. We are level 18. 
So we are really out leveling the enemy team this game. Kind of out leveling our team as well. We should hit level 20 off of this wave, and that will put us at level 20 before 20 minutes. So now we're not too worried about farm. It's only gold that we're going to get from camps. We're going to try to help out in this team fight by rotating over. We are a little bit of a lone ranger over in left. The enemy Fafnir leaves. It's just Guan Yu and myself. They're all chasing Guan. We don't think that they've seen us yet. Persephone definitely just saw us. We're going to keep looping back. We are not here to fight. We are only here to try to help Guan Yu get out. But he goes down. We're going to get some free damage off and then just fall back. That's a blank. We're going to use our beads. Dash up. We take some additional damage right here. We're going to use our ultimate to get that CC immunity and immediately just dash away. We're still being chased. We are able to get out, so we're going to go ahead back. Looks like they stopped pushing right. We're going to rotate towards mid. Try to try to see what we can do. We just saw two of their people back. We got to assume that the other two are falling back if they haven't backed directly. And then Pathmere is still gone. So we're going to go ahead and just clean up this free gold fury. We're the only person on our team that has fire giant left. I'm going to go ahead and skip this pause. The game resumes. Oh, hello, Baron. We're not dealing too much damage to him, especially if we're missing our basic attacks. That's a block. We're going to activate our one. That's his bees. So that goes, gets the slow. We're gonna have to use our Aegis to survive right here. That's a good thing we did. We would've taken a lot of damage. We use our two, we're able to get the pick onto the Gilgamesh. That's a Persephone ultimate. We need to focus that, we are the hunter. By us focusing that, we should be able to get the pick or release our teammates, I should say. Get the pick on our ultimate is where I was going. We do have our ultimate, but we don't wanna take any power shots right here. We're gonna go ahead and secure the tower, use our ultimate, fire it onto the Persephone. She dashes, uses an Aegis, and Baron also tries to body block. There is a chance we would have gotten our chain lightning off from Oboe. This build is really good at melting squishies. It is not the best at destroying structures. pretty weak so we're probably just gonna back it up right here we have enough money to finish off our deathbringer deathbringer is gonna provide us with 50 physical power 25% critical strike chance it has a passive that critical strike bonus damage dealt is increased by 30% so it's gonna give us a decent amount of power give us a decent amount of critical strike chance and then increase those crits This is 
I remember this play. On here is here. We're going to try to get a little bit of damage. We get the stun, get some basics. He uses his jump. We land some one shots, get him about half health, and we're like, ah, uh, do we ult? We ult? We're going to ult. We ult him. He goes back under tower. We're in a terrible spot. Oh, hello, Gilgamesh. We're in a lot of trouble now. We're going to wiggle, dash, and then here goes Persephone, and we go down. We just got really aggressive. There's no reason we should have ulted that right there. Just Honor has been sitting under tower all game, and we wanted to either pick onto him. Looks bad for our team. We have two down. Three down. And it all started because of us. We are going to be upgrading our starter item to Hunter's Cow. Not on this back though, we don't have enough gold, we're about 200 short. Even if we sold our wards and health potions, we'd still be short. We might be able to catch Baron right here. Let's go go mesh ultimate, we're going to have to wait it out. Baron still being chased. We're gonna try to get some damage off on this corner without committing and going all the way through it. That's a Baron too. We just avoided by not committing to it. We have the minions real quick. Persephone ultimate. We're gonna basic back that down, bringing our teammate. Throw off our two. That's a Vulcan ultimate. It's able to connect on a few. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. Guan uses his ultimate. The double horse charge. We're able to get the pick onto one. We're gonna dash up. Land some basics. We're able to get a pick on another. We're gonna try to get some damage onto this Baron. And we're able to secure a triple kill. So now we just need to get this tower. It's just Gogamesh up. We have our whole team up. We have two people pretty weak, but even if we just have Vulcan, Sobek, and myself pushing this Phoenix, we should be able to secure it. Sobek charges in. We're going to use this time to focus down the Phoenix. We need some damage onto this Gilgamesh. And Vulcan's able to clean him up. Enemies up in about 10 seconds. We're going to try to get some damage onto this Titan. Our team's just very weak though. That's the unfortunate thing. They have two people up. Take out the Persephone ultimate and we're gonna fall back with our team. Our team's still hanging about. If we can get a pick or two here, that might be enough to give us a window to end the game. However, we unfortunately were not able to do that. So we're just going to keep backing it up. Tactical Fury. Gold Fury is up between Guan and myself. We should be able to secure it. The Primal Fury is going to allow the team that destroys it to deal 7% more damage to jungle monsters. So this includes Harpies, Colored Camps, Gold Furies, and the Fire Giant along with Pyromancer. So whenever we have the purple buff, whether it be enhanced, regular, or whenever we use R2, our attack speed is going to be capped at 2.5% or 
attack, fire giant. War we need rises. more. On my way. We have two wards. We're gonna go ahead and set those up. We force on her to jump back. We're gonna go ahead and start this fire giant up. We're moving as a five man, so even if they are grouped up, it's only gonna be a four man for them. We get the pick on on her, we're gonna use our Aegis beads. If we weren't under tower, we would have just used beads right there. No way Gilgamesh makes it out. Yeah. Good so back pluck. Good. Team's just keeping up the pressure. We're gonna start working on the tower. An enemy has been slain. They've just got Baron Zombie left. We're gonna work on the Phoenix. We don't need to worry about Baron and the enemy team surrenders. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That really helps these videos out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.